I've been sick for like six weeks. <laughs> um, it's pretty nuts. Um, I was doing, uh, I was really sick and then uh, I got better and then I got really sick again. Uh, stop shaving, go out a beard. I have to get rid of that soon. Um, I ended up in the ER room, spent eight hours there. And a guy there, his name was Ernie. Ernie slipped on some ice, busted his shoulder. He was there full eight hours alongside me at the hospital. Now, Ernie was a chatty Kathy, just talked all the time, you know. And at first I felt frustrated. I was irritated. I just wanted to listen to my podcast. I just wanted to eat my food, let the time sort of go by in a blur. And Ernie kept just talking to me, you know, keeping those seconds going. And, you know, I got frustrated. I got irritated. But, you know, I practiced mindfulness and I... You know, I let those feelings go and I, I just accepted that I was interacting with another human being and that I should pay attention and, and maybe I'll learn something, you know, maybe, maybe something interesting will happen. Maybe I learned something about him, about me. Ernie had a kind of a tough life, you know, and um, it's interesting because he was very grateful. He was very thankful, very appreciative of the people who were helping, of the nurses, of the staff. Ernie, when he was uh, young, very young, he had uh, open heart surgery. You know, he was born with some type of heart defect, and 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 he was grateful because they told him, "Hey, if you were born 20 years earlier, we didn't have the technology in order to help you." You know, and uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, it's often I shouldn't say often, and it's not everybody, but I'm so surprised when the people who have the most to complain about, who have all the troubles in the world, who had a rough go of it, um, are. <laughs> thankful or grateful and he said something like you know I, I i could have had leukemia you know at least i only had a heart defect that could be fixed you know he was grateful for that he was thankful for his life and he reminded me of that of being grateful and thankful and i think about the world and i think about the world we exist in and all that we have to be thankful for and he, might, he reminded me of steven pinker who wrote enlightenment now who talks about how much better the world is than ever before, that the world is far better now than ever before. He reminded me of Peter Diamandis, who wrote Abundance. He reminded me about how much better life is today than ever before, that we should be appreciative of that and thankful and grateful. And I am. But I kind of feel like sometimes, look, I, I don't know how to put this, but this is how I feel. I feel like I'm a millionaire's housewife, you know, who's being emotionally abused by her husband. You know, don't you know how good you got it? Don't you know how good you got it? You know, living in a big house, you have money to spend, cars to drive, can get anything that you want. And it's like, yeah, but you keep putting me down, you keep abusing me, you keep making me feel like I'm nothing, like I'm powerless, you know? And that's kind of how I feel in this world. You have so much to be grateful for. Don't you know how good you got it in the Western world? Don't you know how good you got it? You should be thankful. And I am, but... This feeling of feeling disempowered, this feeling of feeling down, this feeling of feeling like all the problems are piling up and what can you do about it and the planet's going to explode and I don't know. I, I guess I guess what I want is, look, I believe that there's always going to be classes and there's going to be people on top and the elites who are have it way better than the rest of us who are able to do way more than we can. And there's going to be us at the bottom, the lower class, the ones at the bottom of the ladder. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being at the bottom of the ladder. You know, I'm okay with being the slave, the servant, the one down below. But can't we just get a better cage? That's what I want. I want a better cage. Okay, a better cage with better food and better water and better air and better things. You know, just a better cage. I think that's the message that Happy for a Change should spread. We want a better cage. We will be your servants and we will be your slaves, but just make that a little better for us. A better cage. Okay, I think this video kind of got away from me. Not exactly the message I wanted to spread, but... Uh, there you go. I don't even know how to make that better. <laughs>